Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. This is season four. Absolutely not. It's season five. What do you mean it's season five? <laughs> oh, you must keep up with the program. Finally, you've been busy, but I've been keeping tabs. This is season five. Well, welcome to season five. It's episode 57. And in tonight's show, we have the latest and breaking automotive news. Our guest is Pierre Breitenbach, and we're going to talk Footpick Diaries. And uh, we're going to review the Ford Everest Sport tonight. And then we're going to have Pierre joining me on Game Time, which I'm sure I'm programmed to lose. And then we're going to have our segment on how things work, where we're going to look at weight classifications on our vehicles. And of course, we're going to revive Tap It of the Week. Listen, it's so good to be back. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Let's Talk Automotive. Right, Peter, for you, it's, it's been a while since we've done this, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, please bear with us uh, as we uh, <laughs> brush off the dust. The cobwebs. Uh, the last time we had a live show was at uh, Triumph in Pretoria. It was, you know, and, and I still have the same shirt on. It looks like I haven't <laughs> taken it off since. <laughs> so since then, we've had Samola Hill Climb. Oh, that was fantastic. Wasn't Your it? first time? It was, it was, it was. What a brilliant event. I can't wait until this whole pandemic is over and we can get spectators back because then it's going to be even more epic. It Absolutely. was fantastic. So uh, then we had a little bit of a break and then I went to the Kalahari. Yeah, you've been gallivanting a bit. Mm. Does your wife still love you? She loves me more. <laughs> she loves me yeah. more. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we've been busy in the meantime shooting reviews and doing all sorts of content creation for the show. So yeah. stay tuned and make sure to subscribe and like the Facebook page and share and go crazy, guys. For the guys joining us, I see that uh, Barcy is back. Thank you very much, Barcy. And Marnie Krill is also watching. Thank you, Marnie Krill, for joining us. Um, are you guys ready? I'm ready. I'm right, so, looking forward to this lucky comment. So let's get going with tonight's show and let's get straight into this week's news. All right, so the news tonight, I'm going to summarize in the following way. I'm going to go <laughs> the good, the bad, and the ugly. And um, you guys at home can choose and decide which is which. Well, I've really made my decision. I'm not going to maybe, I'm not going to tell the viewers what it is, but uh, let's kick off. Okay, so unfortunately, let's start with some bad news. Petrol price increase again. We've, we've had this discussion a couple of times. Um, so what's the story? Petrol price going up now, the, the most expensive it's ever been. What's the story? It's the most expensive it's ever going to be. Um, having said that, we're still in good shape relative to other countries, as we've shown on a few episodes, actually. Yes. So it's a bit of a shock to the system because we're not used to it. And I know that other territories that we supply fuel to get it cheaper, so Botswana, for example, but they have a different tax level. But you go to the UK, uh, you go to Zimbabwe, you'll know all about a petrol price. Yeah. Uh, but there are some mitigating factors. I mean, the, the, I think the reality is, is that the markets are opening up again after the pandemic. Yes. So there's built up demand that wasn't there. OPEC and Russia um, are tightening the taps a little bit to, I suppose, profit. Uh, this is their last hurrah with oil before the demand for oil starts to tap off yeah. uh, with electric vehicles and renewable energies and the like. So I think they, they, they're taking a chance there. Uh, but I also got to say that I think uh, uh, Uncle Joe Biden, let's go Brandon, <laughs> in the US. <laughs> has also, I think, uh, scored an own goal because yeah. he shut down a lot of the capacity of the US to, pr to produce oil. they opening up again in terms of markets yeah. and uh, they, they've become a net importer again versus being a net exporter where they were a few years ago. Okay, and, and you mentioned earlier that, that cars are um, on average about a million rand these days, so well, why should we complain it, about exactly. fuel prices? 20, 20 rand a litre of fuel? <laughs> <laughs> I think we, need okay. to, we, we just need to increase our salaries, then yeah. we'll be okay. Let's, let's just make some more money, alright. <laughs> okay, so I I'm not sure if that was the bad or the ugly. That was the bad. Well, okay, so let's go to um, the second story tonight is, uh, I'm not 100% sure how to say this, the, the bake. <laughs> bake. Bake. Yeah. That's yeah. how I heard them saying it. Really? Yeah. Okay, so, so for you guys at home, 
Um, should I bake a cake or is this a bake? <laughs> let's, let's show a picture. So this is the new B40 Plus bake. Yeah. A, a Jeep it, sort of, it sort of reminds me of something that I've seen before. I'm not 100% sure, Pete. It's, a, Jeep it, a, a Jeep Wrangler. A Jeep Wrangler. Yes. Okay, sir. let me tell you a little inside story, Barney. When I was, okay, that's a Mercedes-Benz uh, C-Class, the, Mercedes the old C-Class interior. And, and this, this, it, it is because Bake have a JV with Mercedes-Benz in China. Okay. Right? Um, the, the exterior is most definitely heavily based on the Jeep Wrangler to the point that you can actually swap the roof out between a Wrangler and the Bake. It's exactly the same dimensions. It's very interesting. Yeah. And, and uh, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed what they said about the inspiring front grille um, taking inspiration from um, the Great Wall of China. Well, I don't know if the Great Wall of China has five grills in it, but I do know another vehicle that has multi-slotted grills in it, which is seven. So, yeah. <laughs> I'll leave that up to your imagination. Okay, so I actually, I actually was completely dumbfounded when I saw that there's a new model because it's just been so the, quiet the for Pake, the last Pake two or three a, years. Is, is like the international man of mystery of the motor <laughs> industry. Because I don't see them anywhere. Yeah. I, I counted they have 13 dealers in the country. They've got this massive facility on the Eastern Cape. I can't pronounce the new name of PE, I'm sorry. <laughs> Quebec. Yeah. Um, and I, I think the lights are on, but nobody's home. We drove past it. There's it's no insane. one there. So really intriguing brand for me. But listen, I will give them their dues. That vehicle actually looks the past. No, it does. It does. And it's at the right price. Yeah. So let's see how it goes. All right. Okay, so let's move on to the next story. This could now be the good. Okay, so new Ford Ranger coming out, Pete. The, 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 the Ranger Amarok. Just look at that. Okay, so I know that you can't see a lot, so a little bit of spy pictures, but, but this is a new Ford Ranger. I, I'm looking forward to it, I must say. I think there's a lot of work that's been put into it. We know, of course, that... Uh, Ford is building the Ranger and the new Amarok in Roslyn, so this is, this is a JV between the two businesses. And um, I think because it's been built from the bottom up by yeah. both companies, I'm expecting big things out of this vehicle, can't wait. My question is, is when are we going to see the new Raptor? Because that, for me, as a South African that likes big buckies, yeah, yeah. I, I, oh, I can't wait for the new Raptor to come out. Okay, so um, that's the good, the bad, and the ugly, and now let's talk about some brilliant news. Oh. Dropping today, Darren Binder has got a, a, a seat in MotoGP next year, 2022, with Yamaha. Almost one of the worst kept secrets in MotoGP. <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. Was and we called it, didn't we? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 we did. So I, I'm thrilled for him. I, I think that it's a well-deserved ride. You know, he's got quite a big frame, as you can see in that yes. picture. And what people don't realize is that in Moto3, he actually carries a power penalty because he's overweight in his class. Yeah. If he was small like the other guys, he'd be absolutely demolishing them. Yeah. And I think now going to MotoGP with weight is not as critical. Watch that kid. I'll tell you something. My sneaky suspicion is that he's got more raw talent than his, than his brother. Sure. So watch out for young Darren. That's, 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 a, that's a big statement. Uh, <laughs> so let's, let's revisit that at the end of uh, 2022. Let's, we'll, we'll make sure that we save that clip. We'll come back to that. <laughs> All right, guys, that brings us to the end of the news. Um, so I think what we're going to do now is uh, move on to our next segment, which is Guest of the Week. Mr. Breitenbach. Hello, Poppy. How are you doing? <laughs> so, Bobby, gentlemen, so lovely being in your studio again. I think this is probably one of very few second appearances on the show. Yes, second appearances. Appearances. Appearances, yes. <laughs> yeah. Other than me, of course. I think you were, I mean, you I'm you were my second guest and now you're a presenter. Are I'm you the second guessing everything you say? <laughs> <laughs> he does. He does. He often says I uh, speak bull. Um, <clears throat> yes. Kuntash. Bull Kuntash. Yeah. Church, um, um, but I'm the guest that never left. So, you know, Pierre, maybe, maybe you got a chance here, huh? Yes, man, I, I'm just holding thumbs. <laughs> but the it last, is awesome the, to have you. The last time we Lovely spoke, we had a bit of a uh, get to know Pierre and how you're doing and what's happening and all yeah. that sort of stuff. 
But now we've got you on the show to talk about a different type of thing, and it's called Footpeck Diaries. Yes, yes, yes. I, 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 I deliberately didn't bring any branding along. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes, Footpeck Diaries is 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 not your competition on YouTube, but it is on YouTube. Yes. Um, uh, I mean, we're totally two different markets, but it's it's about it's about old man sport. Some people call it adventure riding, motorcycle adventure riding, and the stories behind it, and the experiences, and the fun, and the falling your ass off and getting back up and doing it all over again. You see now, I mean, that's the point where I don't understand how you can call it an old man sport. I'm terrified of it and I ride super bikes. Yes, uh, beyond a certain age, you do break even more easily. Um, uh, I'm also there. But I mean, yeah, it's part of the jewel. It's a I can imagine. I mean, listen, you guys are sailing close to the wind in terms of, you know, the, the, the danger aspect. Um, I did see... <laughs> A video clip of uh, my colleague next to me. Oh, funny! That was funny. Uh, um, um, yes, uh, just having a little moment. I'm just saying that it was. If you think that, if you think <laughs> that adventure biking is for, I almost said the other word for sissies. <laughs> then, then, then think again. Uh, we were doing. I'm not going to say with what bike and when it was, but me and Farney. It was, was a long time ago. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It was a. Yeah, it was a couple of months ago. Yeah. Uh, I was right behind him, and he was riding along at a rather fair pace, and I chased him. I said, "Come on, more, more, more! Hit this target!" And we got to the target. <laughs> if you think a hundred is quick on sand, no. Nah. <laughs> um, <laughs> way out of the league. But anyway, so Farney hit the target very impressively. He went yes, and at that moment, the sign said 60 kilometers now. And I just said, stop, 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 stop. And the road dipped and turned and there was a cliff. And finally made it. He rescued it at, yeah. at, at that speed around the corner. And uh, I thought he was going to die, my dear friend Farney. <laughs> but he made it. I don't know. I mean, if he, if he died, you would have done the show on your own. Which and would I would have got the insurance payout. For starting you. <laughs> Foiled again. But listen, on a serious note, I mean, and I did watch that and I was super impressed. I mean, I would have, you know, had to change my outfit after that. But uh, mm -hmm, me too. In terms of adventure riding, define adventure riding. I mean, and I see it as, as maybe just going on a few dirt tracks. It's, it's, it's the same as, it's a, it's a passion. It's like track riding. It's like if you have a car and you do track days. Yeah, it's, it's, it's that, that thing you spend all your kids' university money on. That, <laughs> you know, <laughs> petrol and Brannevein, which, which shouldn't go together. Let me just say it now. Yeah, it, is, it is wrong and I do not endorse it. I do not. So please never do that. But unless you run out of petrol, you can uh, use a brand bag. But uh, but the thing is, it's a it's a. Um, what was the question again? Define, Define adventure. Define. <laughs> adventure. <laughs> adventure. Adventure. It's, it's it's the experience of being taken out of your usual frame of mind and reference, mm. being uh, approaching something totally alien to you, or a situation, or a space, or an area, and 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 finding your pleasure and your stimulation in new things that's highly highly risky uh, and a, a little bit exciting yes excellent i mean look i've i've watched a, a couple of episodes of footback diaries and i want to now move to the actual program and and kick off with what are you doing with footback diaries what's the essence behind it the essence behind it is we're just a couple of oaks that want to be honest about about who we are and what we like to do um the first couple of episodes are very vanilla we just put up a couple of vanilla episodes and there's another two three four episodes coming down that's rather vanilla so every kind of so city riding adventure supporter can 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 do relate. Uh, relate and enjoy that and then we get a little bit more hardcore around Jan january's time we're going to be showing some real hardcore stuff, but it's about it's about a bunch of oaks, all ladies getting together. Um, we don't know okay, who you are, uh, uh, just being brothers in that moment, enjoying the ride, telling the story because there's always a story to these. That's that's mm -hmm. why people do adventure riding. Yeah, mm -hmm. you get to a certain I won't say a certain age, but a certain a certain s state of mind. Yeah, where you feel like. My life only has value if there's true reality and stories to it, if there's honesty to it. Yeah. And, and that's what adventure riding is to us. So there's, a, there's always a story. The trip you do is a story. It's always a story. There's drama, there's action, there's jokes. There's always a story that people riding with you always have their own stories. Mm. And, and there's always a story where you're going at. Are you riding through? So where was this story? Sorry oh, to interrupt. Mr. Karl Stasi. 
uh, 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 which tra roughly translated means cow station. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, this is just cow station. <laughs> yeah, cow, cow station. So, so uh, yeah, this is our first series that we one of the vanilla episodes. Um, uh, yeah, oh, no, so I'm not dissing it. I'm just saying it's it's very accessible. It's not you know not out of a lot of people's. Oh, I reach. loved it. I loved the the the, 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 the first episode and I, I watched. I actually WhatsApped you to say listen. Yes, you I, did. I mean, this was I appreciated a lot. Was, this was awesome. But listen. This man as well is also part of part of the show, so I mm. want to maybe ask you a quick question if you don't mind. Please shoot. So maybe you can describe your involvement and and how you how you feel about the program as well. So so um, yeah, it's weird being asked questions on your show. <laughs> um, I'm completely now sort of don't know what to say, but anyway, um, I'm What's involved. Then? I'm involved with uh, this show as the camera chase bike. Okay. So I've got a. A bike full of cameras, yeah. front and rear, and helmets and chest and arms and everywhere. And records the audio of the helmets. He does everything. He basically also makes coffee on the run. It's like, oh, a, it like yeah. an espresso machine. <laughs> so there's, there's, there's the fitting of the bikes with the cameras. Yeah. Yes, so, yes. so that's Pierre's bike, and that's got also that's got a flipping awesome system that's built into the bike. That's got a camera on the front and a camera at the rear, and it rec when you start the bike up, it starts recording. Um, Flippin' amazing. That's on the top of Jericho's Rock. Uh, probably the best view that I've seen after Two Oaks crashed horribly. Um, yeah, so, you know. Now, and are you comfortable about it? Are you comfortable being the cameraman? Do that, by the way, on, on that, before you answer that question, yes. when you see the chase camera cars on movies, they're all painted black. Do yeah. they paint you up black? No. no. Okay, no. I'm just checking. No. Um, <laughs> I wasn't comfortable with that. I wanted that. to say something witty, but I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. Uh, uh, are you comfortable? No, I'm not comfortable with him behind me. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, so, um, yeah, fortunate and blessed to be part of this. Uh, what an experience. We get to go places and just have mm. a, a jaw with mates riding bikes and, and just uh, documenting the, the story behind everything. And I've got to say, uh, as each day goes by, I'm getting increasingly more jealous. But we'll talk to that a little bit later. Mm. So, Footpeg Diaries, what inspired you? You, you? you obviously had a moment in time where you, you sat back and said, I want to do this program. What, what inspired you to do it? There's so many things, uh, foreign oaks coming to South Africa or Southern Africa. And I've ridden most of Southern Africa, and I've experienced it. And I think there's so many things of Oaks coming here, foreigners. Mm. Uh, uh, there's a lovely thing now with, uh, 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 with what's the girl's name? Anyway, uh, <laughs> riding here, and she's a just Itchy it, Boots. Itchy Boots. Ah. Uh, not a leap. And there's a thing with, uh, uh, with number 100, Lyndon Poskett, coming. You know, it's always exciting because he's in Southern Africa, and we follow his trip all the way back to the UK. But, I mean, there's nothing of a South African. Um, we've got local Oaks taking great footage of them writing very technical things and there's, there's a place for that but I mean we also need the story told from a South African perspective um, a local perspective and not a local I want to be intellectual and it's esoteric and that kind of thing <laughs> oh there's a place for that but it shouldn't be overriding you just want to have a nice story and you want to you want to see places you can ride and you want to learn new things and you want to be excited just by being in this country because that's the thing the show has to be optimistic and positive I'm tired of Oaks being negative pupola I yeah, want to yeah. be positive it's we all need to be positive and I mean I was going to ask you what 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 do you think makes you different in terms of what you're doing with the show so you you not a technical show. Yes. What, what, are you, what are you trying to do? We do things wrong. We are not pros. <laughs> and when we do things wrong, we document them and we show it. We own up to it. <laughs> we know we are idiots and we revel in it. Yeah. And, and that's the wonder of, 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 of riding honest adventure biking. It's, it's, I'm just going to hide the two falls I had. No, we are showing it. And yeah. you're going to own it. And I mean, that's, that's, the th that's the angle we're taking. And you're also being a little bit naughty. I mean, is, isn't that a bit naughty there, a bit stout? No, you? man, now look at all those people writing against the wall. How can that be naughty? <laughs> it's just a little sticker. <laughs> it's the thing I do. <laughs> I want to so, open up before we carry on. I want to say to the guys at home, listen, guys, this is an, a live interactive show. So if you have any questions for Pierre about Footpeg Diaries, please 
You can uh, you can comment and ask your questions. Yeah, no if questions you, about you, the hair. If you have questions about his choice of hairstyle that uh, <laughs> is going on, it's going you can all also you, you can also ask about that. I, um, I'm, I'm just jealous that he's got hair to have a yes. hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. <laughs> Murray, Murray Crocom says adventure riding is just being free, enjoying the beauty of our country, which is exactly that. Dirtish. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, an obvious question is, uh, you, you, you guys are, you, you've said you, you I, don't, I wouldn't say you're amateurs, surely. I mean, you guys surely, you're not qualified. I mean, but what makes you qualified to, to host a show like this that, that hopefully millions of people are going to watch? What makes us qualified? That's, that's a very difficult question. I don't think we are qualified instructors. I don't, they, you ask one question about tyres. And what type of tires you should use an adventure bike? There will be 500 different uh, replies and ideas and concepts on three different forums, and I can name them, but I'm not going. To. <laughs> and I know these forums personally and intimately. And, and I mean things like that. So there's a lot of oaks with a lot of opinions. None of them are professionals, but that's mm. guys who enjoy the sport, who enjoy the activity. So, so, so I think once you're honest about who you are, what your ability is, uh, what you'd like to see and honest about, uh, about sharing it with friends that are dear to you, yeah. um, then, then now and there's, then you're qualified. I love it. And, and in fact, we, we, you know, we try to teach our, our sales executives in the motor industry that if you make your own video of a walk around, customers trust that more than a, a, a corporate video. So yeah. I think you guys are onto a good thing there, actually. Thank you. So in terms of planning, I mean, look, I, I know you guys did quite a mega trip now that uh, you went to the Kalahari for 11 days and there's... Quite a logistical nightmare. So, so, so the planning, where does that start and how does that go about? <laughs> Me. Pick you, pick you. <laughs> yes, yes, my wife gets rather irritated because she comes home and I'm on the laptop checking out places and, you know, tracking GPS tracks and, you know, testing these things and researching there and, yeah. and phoning friends who've been there and getting tips. And so I love doing that. So that's also a part of the thing. Eventually, we, 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 we want to we wanna have a database. Yes. Uh, it's all here now and on my laptop, but we'll have a database where Oaks can say, listen, I want a three day trip in the Waterberg. Yeah. Show me, and I don't like too thick, thick sand. So yeah. sand, and it's going to be my wife in the back as well. And we, we want, don't want to camp. We want catering. And then I can tell them, okay, this is this and this is. There's a nice route because people need that. Hey? Mm. People, people want to get out, but they just don't know, always. They're not sure exactly where to go or how to approach it. So mm. if we can help people out like that, that's also in our in our future plans. Awesome. Is it is it fair to say that this is the passion project? This is the thing that gets you going. Yes, yes, yes. There's, there's, there's only two loves in my life. One <laughs> is now sitting at home while I'm here. Luckily, uh, you said that was the first one. Yes, yes, yes. For you. And the other one, I ride. <laughs> <laughs> like, <Whoa. laughs> All right, okay, so, so, so I've got a question here. Somebody yeah. is asking, oh, it's actually my wife, sorry. She says, where can I get one of those Fitbit Diaries shirts? Studios. Yes, yes. She wants uh, one. But, but by, unfortunately, uh, we're all out this year. I can't believe it. Um, but by January, we'll have some proper or then look at nice stock and a lot of other things as well. And yeah. We'll put them on. on, on the I think it's important to note here quickly uh, for the viewers watching this, where and how can they follow this mm. adventure and this journey? Footpeg Diaries on YouTube. Uh, it's, we have a Facebook page as well, uh, but Footpeg, one word, and then Diaries. It's almost like too much Afrikaans, eh? Yeah. Because Afrikaans is two words together the whole time. They yeah. can't separate words. Mm. So this is Footpeg Diaries. <laughs> um, and it's on YouTube and it's on Facebook. Okay, you want to follow us on Instagram? Yeah, there's please a logo there. Wow. Yeah. Awesome logo. Who designed that, by the way? Because that is actually quite appealing. It's, it's, it's my, my... I have a partner, which is a silent partner. He says I shouldn't say who he is. But he's just the oak who does the admin, because I'm terrible at doing admin. That, that's him, by the way. Uh, not, not, not Wagner. Wagner is the celebrity. Um, but he does the admin, and, 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 and uh, yeah, he got it managed to, managed to uh, wangle that. Okay, so, so, so we, we answered Murray's question here quickly, but I just want to say, Murray, uh, you can go to YouTube right now, search Footpeg Diaries, and you'll see all the, the first two episodes and some bonus features and everything's there. And uh, you have to subscribe. Don't just go yeah, and yeah, watch yeah. the. Very you have to stuff. subscribe and you have to turn on your notifications and uh, Press the bell. Facebook and Instagram. Like Instagram. this show. Please subscribe to this show. Do all the bells and whistles because um, if you do that, Pete will come to your house personally and give you a kiss <laughs> on the cheek. <laughs> please do that. 
<laughs> so talking about uh, kissing on the cheek. Um, yes, my dear. <laughs> what is what is next in terms of footpeg diaries? What can we look forward to? Um, <sighs> Without giving away too much. Without giving away too much. Uh, there's going to be a new episode, a new, shall we say, a trip, new trip broadcasting uh, uh, next week, uh, starting on Thursday. Uh, so another friend of mine, which is, oddly enough, also an actor, um, he is going to ride with us through, through a, a, a place, I'll call it the Friedefort Dome, which is quite interesting. A lot of the Gauteng riders like to ride down there, so we're mm -hmm. going to have some experiences there and a little bit of extra activities thrown in for fun. Um, and then there's a big, big, big adventure that we're, like, we're planning on doing closer to the beginning of the year that's going to air then. And there's a lot of things in the pipeline. It's all about Footpeg Diaries is going to be a, a, a constant Vollhoubare uh, Initiative. <laughs> it is going to be a constant thing running. So every two weeks we want to put out a series episode of a 20 to 30 minutes episode of an adventure, uh, a part of it, and, and, and maybe if there's extra bonus features every week, you know. And, but it's going to be right through the year, and for, for the future, we're just planning on keeping on keeping on. Mm. So, at least if I buy a Footpeg Diaries t shirt, it's going to be relevant for a while. I'm going to give you one. Oh, I, I was aiming towards that. Damn but, it. But only, Neuro only linguistic only, program. Only, only, really only, <laughs> only, yes. only in January. Only in January. You can take this one. <laughs> All so right. in, terms of, in terms of the show and, and what it's showcasing, I mean, it, is it showcasing celebrities? Is it showcasing technical riding, yeah. uh, bikes? Is it for tourists? What is it showcasing? I'm in the position that I know a couple of friends that work with me uh, in, in, in the industry, so, and I know they ride bikes, so I want to take them along because they also have little stories that are interesting. Uh, so we use them as, as riding partners, you know, just yeah. guests riding along. But there's also about the story where we are, said it's about it's a little toury tourism -y because we we, 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 we want to showcase beautiful places because mm. that's part of, of adventure riding and yes there are little technical elements uh, I'm not saying I'm, I'm, I'm a good rider but I have a little bit of experience I do about 30,000 k's a year on it <laughs> um, and 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 there are little things that that people can share and actually fight about on air and go that's not true. I don't find it bad. And then we talk about it and we have a little bit of a duel and, and people can join in. You know, it's, yeah. it's an open thing. And if we make mistakes, then we make mistakes and we enjoy making mistakes because that's how we learn. That's the thing with adventure biking. Mm. Where in the world now can you be allowed to make a mistake? Serious stuff. Like, no, you, yeah, like, yeah. like plowing head first at 70 kilometers an hour into a sand wash in a river. And probably you might break something on you or your bike. Where yeah. are you allowed to do that? And with oaks around you that support you, and when that happens, they come to you. They say, are you fine? We care about you. Are you all right? Yeah. That was a fault that you made. It was a mistake, and it was cool because you learned something. And we all enjoy you learning stuff. So, I mean, with all the cameras on all the bikes, I presume there have been a few oopsies. And are Plenty. we going to see those on the show? Plenty. We don't hide the falls. Uh, 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 so Farni is going to be featured quite Farnie's a bit. Going to be featured quite a lot. Um, <laughs> but, but I must tell you, Farni is like a dwarren in thick sand, like knee-high sand. It was lovely watching him in river washes. Uh, he really got onto it. He was scared the first day. Not scared. Luckily, yeah. we've got a um, beeper. Yeah. Because yeah, you recorded because the, the audio, audio is recorded. Record, yeah. So Farni was a little, a little bit scared in our last big adventure now. So Farni speaks the most code in this, in this series. You have no <laughs> idea. You have the man, you can't broadcast anything that he says yeah. when, he's, when he's in that sand. You go, I have to play there. You're going to play your mouth. So, so uh, uh, but, but I mean, that's adrenaline. That's, 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 that's what's exciting about it. It's the adrenaline. It's the, it's the fact that you're riding an almost 300,000 Rand worth machine with 40,000 Rand worth of gear, and you go, you know what? If it breaks, it breaks. It's now me, and it's, mm. about, it's about me. Screw the bunny. Screw yeah. the ability of the bike and the engine mm. and the size mm. and the what. It's just now about me. I love that because I think that ultimately too many shows get hung up on trying to be commentators about the bike and <laughs> you know, the capabilities of the bike. What I'm getting a sense of is that you know, that's almost the last thing on your minds. Mm. The, the primary thing here is, is let's go and have fun, have fun and let's have a jaw, let's make mistakes, it's let's about laugh at each it. other. It's not about the bike, it's about yeah. the guy that's riding it. Oh, yes. Somebody wrote a book about that. It's not about the bike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so that, that's what it's about. I mean, like you said, we, we don't, we're, not, we're not hung up on brands. Yes, we, 
we, we, we'd like to try things, you know, bike brands and yeah, so be it. But we're not mm. hung up on specific brands and we're not hung up on specific awesome. w- 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 gear. And I mean, we'll try everything. But eventually it boils down to the experience, the personal experience of that oak riding that bike. And maybe there's someone out there mm. who, who can associate with that and yeah. can go, yes, like, I feel exactly the same. Or that guy is an absolute idiot. And I would like to tell him different. Mm. Uh, and, and, then, and then let's talk about it, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I have to interrupt. Uh, we have to get, we obviously can talk the whole night, sure. but then we won't get to the rest of the show. So you're not going anywhere. Not. Uh, no. But uh, we are going to change things up a little bit. So we're going to go to the review of the Ford Everest Sport and then we'll be back oh. for game time. So if you are a lover of the show and you understand what game time is about, stick around. It will be back right after this review. And this is the Ford Everest Sport. Hi guys and welcome to another review with us, Peter Fulhuden, Fanny Skulls and Let's Talk Automotive and today we've got a Ford, Pete. Yeah, so it's the Everest Sport and it's the 2 litre SRT, so it's a single turbo and it's a four wheel drive as well and we're going to have a look at some of the nuances that are different between this and perhaps another Everest. Okay, so you had the vehicle for a couple of days now, uh, like Everybody by this time knows that you live on a farm because <laughs> you keep on telling us. How is this off-road? Yeah, funny. this, uh, from a suspension point of view, was possibly the best vehicle that I've driven on my farm roads. And, I, and I, like I said earlier, in terms of feeling every single bump, I know where all the bumps are and which ones are hard, etc. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this was fantastic. All right. Let's talk about design, first impressions. Uh, from the outside, the exterior, what do you think? I like it. I like the contrast with the black. I think uh, it looks it, it looks very classy. It's understated. They haven't really, you know, for a sport model, yeah. haven't gone over the top. I love the alloy rims. We're going to talk about those now. Sure. But yeah, so it, it looks the part. So this sport, essentially, there's a lot of black trim, black finishes, black color coding on the, on the uh, mirrors. And like you say, maybe we should come around and let's start talking about that. A 20 inch uh, black alloy rim. And that was the surprise factor because it is a relatively low profile yeah. for a 4x4 four four vehicle and yet it handled all the bumps with ease. Awesome. Let's go around and point out some of the other uh, black trim, this Everest badge here, color coded door handle, or not color coded, the black door handles. Um, I'm, I like it. It's nice and bulky. Uh, I'm impressed. I'll tell you one thing that I did like about this as well with these rims on is I've always felt the Everest wheel track was a little bit narrow. Okay. You know, if you drive behind the Everest, it looks like the wheels are too close together. Sure, sure, sure. Whereas this has got a bit more of a staunch, yeah. bold stance. This is a 265, so that's quite a, 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 a wide tire, a 265-50-20. So yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Let's talk about the back here quickly because this is a seven seat variant as well. Um, so we've got the two seats up at the moment. Uh, if we have them up, there's not a lot of space here at the back, but if we put them down, um, I'm sure that, you know, that's normal and sufficient sort of spacing. And look how flat it goes. Yeah. And this is for me what separates the Everest dramatically from the Fortuna, for example, because the Fortuna, your, your last row of seats, yeah are still sort of hanging up over here and they do take up a lot of lateral space this way Agreed. and they rattle when you're going over bumps <laughs> so this we've got some nice lighting here at the back we've got hooks we've got a 12 volt uh, power socket here tie down hooks at the front there i think there's your tools i think everything that we're supposed to have is down here i'm i'm pretty happy it's got reverse camera and it's got park distance control sensors. I promise you, I know a few people that will still be in the back of the car. <laughs> Let's do a funny fit quickly and see what it's like. Okay, awesome. Yo, Pete, um, this is more like it, man. Yeah, look at all these controls. <laughs> this, this is a proper funny fit, man. It feels like I lost weight. <laughs> Listen, uh, but yo, there's a lot of stuff happening at the back here. Let's talk about that. There's another power socket here at the back. We can control our 
air conditioning at the back here. And not only, is, not, nice on, not only the fan, but also the temperature. temperature. Yeah, the nice vents at the top here. We've got a nice reading light. Um, I'm pretty happy. And remember, this is only the second row. There's another row behind us. Should we do a funny fit there? Pete, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> Okay, Peter, so uh, challenge accepted. Let me see if I can get into the back row. So first of all, it's a bit of a challenging... Uh, okay, I have to climb in here. All right, I'm crawling in. Okay, I hope the viewers like the view of my bum. And uh, I'm in. And you can move that backwards. Yeah, Pete, if I really have to... I'll be able to make it work for 10 minutes or so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pete, so we in the business end, the, the cockpit. Um, let's talk about what we have here. Let's start, let's start with the steering wheel. So quite a lot of functionality on the steering wheel. We've got our speedo cruise and our limiter that we can set here. We've also got our menu buttons for our cluster that we can navigate okay. our menu. It's, it's, you know, unless you, if you're used to it, yeah, it's yeah. not too bad, but it does take a bit of fiddling around to get used to how to access all the different menus and then make yeah, yeah. different settings. The cluster itself. Sorry, I'm going to interrupt you. Uh, this side, this is all for infotainment then. So this side here is for your volume and your command and your telephone. And this side here is to regulate this side of the, oh, the cluster. Interesting. Yeah. So you've got different settings that you can access on this side. So these, the top half of the steering wheel is for your cluster and the bottom half is for cruise control, cruise control and then your infotainment system. Awesome. Okay. Infotainment system. We, we've come to expect this sort of system. We've got your navigation. This is not this is not connected to a phone at the moment, or is it? No. So this doesn't have Android Auto okay. or Apple CarPlay. Really? Yeah. Interesting. So, and, and that's why you've still got the old navigation, navigation system. system that you can see over here. So uh, it's not dependent on a on a phone. Okay. But still does everything that we're supposed to see yeah. here. I connect my phone from a sound point of view. So I have been playing some of my podcasts while I've been driving. So that's sorted. Anger management podcast. <laughs> <laughs> At the bottom here, our uh, climate control system. We've got power sockets, USB sockets, and again, the driving modes. Let's just go through that quickly. All right. So, funny, we've got different terrain modes, as we've come to expect. So, mud and rock crawling and snow yeah. and all those kind of things. And then in the center of here, if you press this button, that activates our hill descent control. Awesome. And, and, and to the touch, 4x4 four four low and diff locks and traction control buttons, everything right there. At your right fingertips. there, so it's no longer a separate gear lever, <laughs> it's all, all electronic. Awesome. I think this is pretty impressive. I think we should uh, take it for a drive. Yeah, let's go and have a look and see how this turbo motor operates. Awesome. So Pete, we are now inside the Ford Everest Sport, um, taking it for a drive. So, uh, what was your initial your initial impression of this interior? You've been driving the car for a, a couple of days now. I have. Um, one of the things that stands out for me with the interior is that there is not a single rattle or squeak. <laughs> And I, as you know, live on a pretty dodgy dirt road. Yeah. And even on the dirt road, you don't hear any rattles or squeaks, but more impressively, the suspension is, I think, one of the best that I've driven on my dirt road. That's, that's a pretty big statement because we've had a couple of cars out there. So uh, that's, that's a definite tick mark. It's a definite tick and I know that road intimately so I know which bumps are <laughs> awkward and which you know make cars rattle and feel yes. feel harsh. This really really handled all those bumps with absolute ease and comfort. All right I think we are in our normal sort of area that we're going to test. I think let's take this to the highway because we need to talk about something very interesting <laughs> and that's the gearbox on this car. Um, yeah. So a 10 speed automatic gearbox. <laughs> this gearbox, this car's got more gears than Vin Diesel's car. <laughs> <laughs> 
So it's quite weird actually yeah, yeah. because um, because it's got so many gear changes. Obviously, it's a very very close gear ratio gearbox, yes. and as a result, at pull off, yeah. most of the time, unless you I suppose have your mother-in-law in the back <laughs> or a trailer, yeah. it pulls off in second gear. But the initial gear changes you just don't feel. So this almost gives you a feel of a CVT and as a result you don't feel yeah. the acceleration. So initially I thought, nah, okay, engine's not that great, you know, it's yeah. a little, little bit underwhelming. Until I look down at the speedo and I see I'm at 140. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so what we're going to do when we get on the highway is we'll put it in manual mode and feel the difference there as well. I'd like to do that, yeah. Okay. Let's do that test quickly with your, uh, put it into sport and let's go So I'm going to put it into sport, now we've got to press a button to activate sports, so this is serious stuff. And then on the side here, we've we've got our shift changes over here. Alright. So we're in sixth gear, so let's pop it down to fifth and you can hear the gear change immediately yes. happening. And it locks it into to gear and then seventh. Uh, let's get into this lane. There we're in seventh. You can feel it. Yeah. Eight. Nine. It's still very seamless. Ten. That's amazing. Well, of course, you're not having these big drops and revs. Yeah. Which is, you know, the less gear ratios you have, the bigger the drops are going to be. That's insane and very impressive. Again, uh, Peter, this ticks all the boxes, eh? Look how quiet it is. I mean, we were at 140 and you barely noticed. 120, Peter. No, now we're at 120. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's take this turn off here. Yeah? Okay. Now we have to talk about the offering, Pete. Who does this appeal to? Remember, we've we've said it over and over again. The the segment very competitive at the moment. Um, why would we choose the Ford Everest over something else in this segment? So interesting question actually and we, we drove the Hyundai Santa Fe the other day which yeah. was an incredible vehicle but this has a proper off-road 4x4 suspension okay. and that's why you would choose this for example over a Santa Fe in certain conditions so yes. certainly you know from a farm point of view and and doing some some off-roading and being able to handle the twisties you want to have a suspension like this 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 is a, a very good comparison between that that santa fe and and in the segment at the ford everest uh, sport yep. versus the santa fe both are seven seaters very similar in size that had the 2.2 liter diesel engine in which was also very impressive yes um so yes very very good comparison let's talk about pricing on this so that's where i think in my mind, things go a little bit south for the Everest and okay. the Sport in particular, because uh, this particular model that we're driving at the moment, which is the four wheel or the four by four, is seven hundred and twenty-eight thousand four hundred. Yeah. Now, so, so it's getting up there. It's getting up there, but remember, there's not much in the way of driver assistance systems. In fact, there are none other than the standard sort of ESPs and the world uh, and the like. No driver aids like lane keep assist or blind spot assist or forward facing collision avoidance systems or any of those good things. All right, let's get back to the studio and uh, just give our final thoughts in the late. Okay, Peter, I'm pleasantly surprised and impressed. It's a very comfortable, very quiet vehicle, especially if you consider that ultimately this is based on the Ranger Bucky platform. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, my final thoughts would be, I think it's a pretty good all-round vehicle. Mm. Um, like we discussed in the car, the the comparison to, what was it called? The Santa, the Santa Fe. Fe. Yeah. Um, you know, very, very similarly priced. It's got you know, the seven seats, it's got all the bells and whistles. I just feel that this has got a little bit more edge off-road. No, for sure. Uh, and that's, you know, again, would be the decision-making sort of criteria. Yes. What are you going to use this vehicle for? If you're going to use it predominantly as an urban cruiser, then maybe you, you've got other choices that you'd have a look at. But yeah. no doubt, if you are somebody like myself that's constantly on serious off-road conditions, then I would start to lean towards this because I just feel that a vehicle like this 
it's not going to fall apart as quickly <laughs> as maybe some of the others. <laughs> right, Peter, so as always, we have to answer a couple of questions now. So first question that we always ask or ask and answer is, would you buy this yes or no? And then we have to give it a rating out of 10. So let's start with your rating. So in, in terms of a rating, I'm going to give it, uh, it's a difficult one because I'm of the opinion that this is getting towards the end of its life cycle okay. um, and so we're going to expect to see a new version come in but having said that considering that i believe it's right there about to be replaced it's still as fresh and evergreen as ever yeah um, it's missing a few of the driver assistance features yeah. so i'm not going to give it a, a 10 out of 10 um, and i think it's a little bit on the pricey side for my liking but nonetheless a solid 8 out of 10. I agree with you on an 8 out of 10. Um, there is a little bit of, you know, the, the technology that I think is a little bit lacking. Would you agree? Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. So, so that's where I deducted a little bit of points. But I like this car. It performs well. I like the new engine. Um, I would definitely add this to my collection. Let's say that. <laughs> and what a collection <laughs> it's becoming. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much for joining us on this review of the new Everest Sport and we'll see you guys again next week. Cheers everyone. We've got uh, a little bit of Facebook gremlins, so unfortunately it seems like the stream is not going out on Facebook, but um, it's going out on YouTube, yeah. which, is, so, which, is, which, is, which is where we want to be. So if you have a problem, and if you can see it on Facebook, I don't know, go to YouTube and watch it there. But, um, you know, what was your final thoughts on that car? I like it overall. I think it's, it, like I said, it's well made. Uh, doesn't rattle and squeak. Um, let's, yeah. let's find out from a, a Toyota Fortuner, like a typical boot with his Toyota Fortuner. What yeah, do you see. think? Why are you throwing <laughs> bricks, bro? I'm just, I'm just saying. We're in yes. South Africa and it's a Toyota Fortuner thing. Might as well wear a little red beret. No. <laughs> Uh, no, it's, you know what, it's a very attractive vehicle, firstly, I think I find the looks attractive. Uh, secondly, I mean, you talk sense beat, which is amazing. Uh, <laughs> then thirdly, it, it's very, it, it, it's a good option, eh? Yeah. It's mm. a really good option. Yeah. I'm, I'm like in the middle here. Well, okay. you, you, you're actually right when you say it's a good option, because you remember where, where Everest was yeah. before this sh shape yeah, came yeah, out, yeah. it was nowhere. I mean, yes. there was no contest, it was Fortuna. Correct. And then when this shape came out, it kind of... Okay, so now, guys, let's, let's get going with my favourite part of the show, and it's oh. called Game Time. Yes. And Shame as time. always, as always, I'm going to give you guys a clue. Um, and I gave them the clue actually before the show started so that they could, you know, warm up and get ready and maybe go I'm and Google so stuff and whatever this. the case is. But as always, there's a little bit of a twist. So these are seven of the most popular cars in the year that Peter was born. which what, is 1945? 1948. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, you Okay. Our age world's supreme. Okay, so... so this is seven of the most popular cars in 1948. Um, how this works is I'm going to show you a partial picture of a car. If you guys are watching the show, you are more than welcome to play along. You can put your answers into the comments. Um, you, can, you can put your answers into the comments and we'll see if you guys get it right or not. Um, but we're going to buzzer this, so you have no, to say your name. So you have yeah. to say your name. Yeah. You've been and here don't, before. Don't, but why are you, you see, so nervous? Why are you so nervous? The thing, is, the, thing is, the previous time when I was here, you kept saying, saying your name, beep, and then you go, hmm. <laughs> you can't just, you can't yes. do that. No, no, no. I was going, Peter, hmm. <laughs> All right. Beat, okay, okay, okay. You know how this works. <laughs> you guys at home, play along. Here comes the first one. Peter, uh, there's oh, no, no you way. Cannot. Absolutely, yes. that is a Porsche. Yeah, yeah, of course, which one? Which looks similar to the back, the back and the rear looks similar. But which one? But Spider. But, uh, no, no. no, wait, 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 wait. This is old. Look at those wheels. It's a hammer. It's yeah. the hammer rim, eh? It's so, so it's 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 three 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 something three something. It's a three it's five six. Yes, <laughs> the three five six. I'm gonna give you the point, Pierre. <laughs> You well see? Done. You see? You see? <laughs> Ooh, eh, eh. <laughs> what a beautiful car. Yeah. Must, have been, must have been cool growing up with cars like that. Yes. Yes. It was. Okay, so one zero. 
No, no, I'm not. I'm, no. I say Porsche. I'm going to give. I'm going to. Okay. What do you mean? Tick it down. I say Porsche. Uh, Tick it down. Okay, so mm. one zero <laughs> to Pierre. Big. Here comes the second one. Pierre. Uh, 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 Pierre, I'm going to be seriously impressed if you know Bro, it. Bro, it looks like. I'm not going to say. It does look like one of those old Buicks. But okay, no, I'll tell you what. It's 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 a. Uh, it's English because yes. look at the at the door handle. It's English, and you've got those. It's a, it's either, and it's an Aston Martin. <laughs> yes, you are absolutely are you serious? correct. I shot in the dark, there, bro. I shot in the dark. It's wow. an Aston Martin, the DB1. What wow. the hell, really? Yeah. Sheesh. Thank you, Pete. Beautiful car. Eh? I'll I'll give you the next one because I didn't deserve this one. Beautiful car. <laughs> All right, so uh, <laughs> let's go to number three. Peter, that is Peter. a Citroen C2. Ah, the C2 a two yeah, C2. Two CV. A 2C. We'll see. The, 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 the V6 I'm going to give it to Peter just it's because Peter's. I feel Peter's. sorry for him at this point. <laughs> it's Peter's. It's Peter's. Okay. You've noticed that all of them are soft tops, eh? Yeah. yeah. All three of them now. It's like Farney's a bit of a soft. Um, no. Yeah, but no, what? <laughs> no top. No top. All right. Yeah, no top. <laughs> Okay, so two, one, two, Pierre at the moment going into the fourth round. Here comes number four. Peter. Oh, oh. There's no way that you know. That, that is a Bentley. No. Yeah, well, um, oh, or a Sunbeam, because that's the green racing colours. No? It's Pierre, Pierre. Uh, Pierre. No, no, what Peter, is that? No, 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 Peter, you go. I know what it is. I know what it is, but you're wrong, Peter. Am I I've wrong? Got it. I've got it. Peter, I've got it. No, Peter, go. Peter, go. Please. I'm not stopping you. Okay, Pierre, I'm but coming to you. What is that? It's a Bentley, because the Bentley's colour was slightly no, darker. The racing green was slightly Bentley. darker. It's the sun, no, it is a Jaguar. Yes. Oh, but do you know which one? one? They're the that use that you're specific You're quite right. Bit. You're quite right. Look at that. And it used to have that nice white circle with a number a on it. Jaguar XK120. Yes. Just like what a car, what a car, eh? Good looking, eh? Yeah. Yes, mm. amazing. Okay, so three to one at this point. Um, yeah. So yeah. I'm an old racing. Let's see. Fan, actually, let's see. Here comes number five. Peter, I've got no idea. I just, I just, I just wanted to. I just wanted to just get up here. I wanted him to think like I knew I was gonna. So this is definitely one that you should get, I'll Peter. Get because uh, Persia, no man. Okay, then I'll take I'll take the second option then. <laughs> okay, which one do you think that it, is? It's 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 probably it's something very boring, as you can see. Yes, it is by by, by the detail. Uh, there's a lot of these in South Africa and on the road, yeah. It's not an escort. It's it, a is a, it is a it is a it is a Morris Minor. Yes, absolutely oh. correct. Yeah, I'm, I'm completely astounded by the fact that you know these cars so well. I'm telling you, Fanny, I am an old race car lover. Very nice. Okay, so 41. 41, Pete. Up, Again. Up. I don't know how this happened. Um, and here comes number six. This is difficult. Look at the color. It's a Corvette color, you know that. Thing. So it has to be American. Look, no. oh, it has to be American. It even, the chrome. It's even Check got, the chrome, it's American. It's even got the it's, hubcap it's, there. It's the hubcap, on the hubcap. What's it? What's it? Is it, a, is it a, a Peter? Yes. Is it, a, is it a Jeep of some sort? Peter, there's no way. Is it a, a Willys Jeep? What? Huh? I don't know. Peter. Copy. Copy. Yeah! <laughs> a Jeepster. In 1948, Willys Jeepster. Sure. How far they've come. How in the name of Peter Pan did that happen? So, so listen, um, <laughs> I, have I, almost, I, almost, <laughs> I almost feel like they copied bake a little bit. <laughs> it, look, it looks like a bake, you right. I wonder if you can swap the roof on that as well. <laughs> okay. okay, here goes the last one. <laughs> this is very easy. Peter. Peter, Peter. Oh, okay. Uh, that is got to be a Land Rover. Yes, you? it's a missing yes. oil everywhere. Yeah. Series it's, one. Because it's a one. That's why, yes. It's very close, eh? 4-2-1, Pierre takes it, so... What? Yes. Well done. Well done. Yes, yeah, at last. Well done. At last. I never win stuff, not even at home. <laughs> 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 All right, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end. Pierre, thank you very much for joining us. Oh, what, a, what a wonderful time to have you on the show. Been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Pierre. Thank um, you. Awesome. It looks like we're going to run a little bit over time. Are you happy with that, Fritz? 
It's okay. our show. Right. We can do it with yeah. what we okay. want. So, so here comes how things work. And tonight we're talking about what? Weight classification. Weight classification. And this is proudly brought to you by Suzuki Auto South Africa. Welcome to this week's segment on how things work. And in today's segment, we're going to have a look at all those weights that you see specified on your vehicles. And we're going to explain all of them. So we've all seen or heard about tear mass or gross vehicle mass or curb mass, GCM and towing capacity. And these terms and acronyms are often quoted in vehicle manuals, on your license disc and even in some brochures. But what do they actually mean? Well, they are all key bits of information about how much load your vehicle is designed and is legally allowed to carry or tow. So let's go through them, starting from the lightest and we'll work our way up to the heaviest. So firstly, we have tear mass. Now simply put, this is the weight of an empty standard vehicle with all of its fluids, so oils and coolants, but it only has 10 liters of fuel in the tank. And we assume that that's just so that you can drive the vehicle from its location to a weighbridge, for example. Next is curb mass or weight, as all of these metrics are also referred to. This is the same as tear mass, but with a full tank of fuel and still without any accessories fitted, such as bull bars, tow bars and roof racks. One that we often hear about is gross vehicle mass. This is the maximum your vehicle can weigh when fully loaded as specified by the manufacturer. Now GVM is the curb mass plus all accessories, so bull bars, roof racks, winches, etc and payload, which I'll talk about next. And if you're towing something, GVM includes the mass on the tow bar, or as it's called, the tow ball download. Payload is a very important measurement to understand. This is simply the maximum load your vehicle can carry as specified by the manufacturer. So it's the gross vehicle mass minus your curb mass. And what's left is the amount of stuff you can load into your vehicle. Now don't forget that this includes all passengers and their luggage, which, which can seriously affect your payload. So for example, if your vehicle has a one-ton payload, my mother-in-law will use up about half of that. Something we hardly ever consider is gross vehicle axle mass. Now this is the maximum load that your vehicle's front and rear axles can individually carry. And you may notice that combined, they exceed the GVM of the vehicle. But this is to provide a safety margin and you can still never exceed the actual GVM of your vehicle. However, it is possible to be under your vehicle's GVM but still be overloaded on a single axle. In instances such as incorrect loading of a trailer for example. So be sure that your loads are evenly distributed. Now speaking of trailers, we also have tear trailer mass. And this is the weight of an empty trailer. The term trailer obviously covers everything you can tow or trail behind a vehicle from a single axle box trailer or a camper trailer to motorcycle and jet ski trailers right up to heavy duty multi axle boat trailers, caravans and horse boxes. If it's a camper trailer or caravan, its tear mass, unlike a motor vehicle, does not include fluids like water tanks, LPG tanks, toilet systems and the like. So tear for trailers is also known as dry weight for obvious reasons. Therefore, the gross trailer mass or GTM is the maximum axle load that your trailer is designed to carry as specified by its manufacturer. It is the combined weight of your trailer and its payload, but does not include the tow bar download. If we include the tow bar download, we then have the aggregate trailer mass, which is the maximum towing weight of the trailer. We have repeatedly mentioned tow bar download, but what is it? The amount of weight on your tow bar is crucial to safe and efficient towing. And any quality tow bar manufacturer will have a data plate showing the maximum tow bar capacity and maximum tow bar download or weight on the ball. Typically the tow bar download should be around about 10 to 15% of the gross trailer mass or GTM, which can be anything from around 45 to 75 kilograms but cannot legally exceed 100 kilograms. The big one, and often the most misunderstood, is gross combined mass. 
This is the maximum weight allowed for your vehicle and trailer combined and this is where you have to pay close attention to your vehicle's gross vehicle mass and your trailer's aggregate trailer mass because these two figures determine the gross combined mass and one directly affects the other. That is, you have to steal from Peter to pay Paul when it comes to balancing out gross combined mass. So for example, say your vehicle has a curb mass of two and a half tons, a gross vehicle mass of three and a half tons, and a gross combined mass of five tons. A manufacturer advertises a towing capacity of let's say two and a half tons. At its curb mass of two and a half tons, the vehicle can legally tow another two and a half tons, but that towing weight decreases in direct proportion to how much the tow vehicle's weight increases. So if you loaded up the towing vehicle to its gross vehicle mass of three and a half tons, that would only leave a towing capacity of one and a half tons to meet the gross combined mass of five tons. On the flip side, if the tow vehicle's gross vehicle mass dropped to three tons, its towing capacity would increase to two tons and so on. The point is, make sure you understand the implications of what load you carry and where you position the load to ensure you do not fall foul of the law. So those are some of the weight classifications that we see published on a lot of literature pertaining to our vehicles and we hope you found that useful and we look forward to seeing you on future episodes of How Things Work. Thank you so much and uh, if you like me you'll go back to that video and watch it like sort of one minute clips at a time make notes and try and understand what he said <laughs> but it's useful because we're going to be traveling over the over, over the christmas holidays and people do get pulled over on way bridges exactly. and yeah. are overweight on their axle or on their trailer that's why i say go back and watch it little bit pieces of it but anyway we have to carry on and finish the show because we are already over time um, and we're getting back to an old favorite segment called Tapper of the Week. Why don't you introduce this? Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, this is my best. So this is one that you sent me, Peter. Drag race, golf, what's that? Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Kaboom. So reverse gear, it's not me. first gear. Racing gear. Ah, uh, he was in R for race. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, let's have a, look, a quick look at that again. <laughs> but when that reverse light came on, <laughs> that guy, in, it, it looks like a, a what is it? A, it looks, it like, looks a, like a say it. He made yeah. a little dusty bolly key on his yeah, he was, reverse light and then the backfire, oddly enough. He was it, going, sort of a front fire. He was going, boop, 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 boop. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the show. Thank you very much for joining us. Unfortunately, I don't know if you guys are still watching on Facebook. It looks like there's a huge delay there. But anyway, um, thank you very much for joining us. It was a, a huge pleasure and an honor to be with you guys. Thank you very much, Pierre, for joining us. Huge pleasure and honor. <laughs> and, and, and sensual experience. And sensual experience. <laughs> Not in a touchy-touchy way, but intellectually. <laughs> thank you, Pete. Good having you back. <laughs> Say goodbye. It's goodbye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>